Ethereum DevCon 4 is the place to be for developers on Ethereum. I traveled to Prague to check out what was being built and this video is an uncensored cut of what it was like to be at DevCon 4. And uh, the Ethereum people that were coming, everybody. To work together. That, yeah, yeah, they're working together with everybody. I want to talk about financial inclusion and there are about 72% of people excluded from the system that um, we are thinking about how to bring them back using blockchain. So how do you get your ticket for DEF CON? Do some contribution to Plasma Cash and Plasma MVP. So I got grantees from Ethereum Foundation and also got a ticket in here. Uh, I think it's the best event I ever attended, like the crypto Whoa, event, seriously. Best crypto event. Yeah, I had the ticket to go to Malta uh, in the middle of the week and I just canceled it. Chains. That didn't work. Proof of proof of work. That didn't work. Hypercube chain. That also didn't work. That also didn't work. Vitalik, everybody. Happy. Over the four days of DevCon, I spoke to a lot of different people working on different projects for Ethereum. Here's a compilation of all those projects and comments that will make Vitalik proud. My name is Xu Ran. I'm from uh, DHBC. Yeah. Hello. And uh, Shane from Sparkpool. I feel like it's like a, it's like a family reunion thing because I see a lot of good friends, good old friends here, and uh, a lot of like genius people talking about their like insights in Ethereum and how Ethereum will work, it will evolve, and I feel like I learned a lot from this. Yeah. Awesome. Good, awesome. Good Do you think it was a uh, what do you think of Ethereum 2.0? You know, like we've been talking about that a lot. Serenity is being like pulled out of the uh, woodworks. What do you think of that? that? So we're not allowed to call it Ethereum 2.0 anymore, <laughs> you know? So I, I really, I'm really excited for the Serenity. And, um, you know, this, uh, this year's conference, I think is very informative in terms of like uh, uh, what's going on with the, with the ecosystem. So yeah, it's been really nice. Awesome. Okay, now we've been talking about, you know, the move to proof of stake for a while for Ethereum. So for the mining pools, are you guys upset? Are you guys, you know, um, you know, what do you think of moving to proof of stake? I'm fine. We'll see. It's unproven and uh, we are really looking forward to it. If it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> if it actually works. So you're a little bit skeptical. <laughs> a little bit. Being more practical. Okay. Uh, the Mithril project is, uh, is for the social and entertainment industry. Uh, we want to do build an ecosystem to tokenize the uh, intellectual property, uh, and we want to reward reward the content provider in this ecosystem with Myth token. So it's all about social media, right? So yeah. you want to right now you have the Lit app and it rewards yeah. um, social mining for yeah. Lit. So uh, are you guys are you actively developing for that project? Or are you you know what are you doing there? Oh, um, my title is uh, VP of Product Engineering. I do the some plug blockchain research and blockchain development and I manage the product team it almost 15 people, 15 engineers in there. Nice. So we keep building the tools uh, like a boat and do a staking to gain your social mining power. Yeah. Okay, now that you're on DEF CON, do you see yeah. Vitalik? There was a shrine for Vitalik yesterday. Did you go and worship Vitalik? Is that is that a thing we can do? <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't to meet a Vitalik. Yeah. That's why you say hi Vitalik. Hey, can you, do you want to come on camera and say hi? This is for YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> okay, poor guy. Okay, that's cool. We got Vitalik. Yeah. <laughs> so we're the security token platform. We essentially guide companies through security token offerings um, by um, through the platform where we offer uh, partnerships with legal, KYC, marketing, and advisory services. Mm -hmm. um, you can speak on more on that. Yeah, we, we have a bunch of uh, technical part. So we have a pretty much cool DAP. So where any issuers who doesn't have the technical abilities can came around and uh, play with the DAP. And it's a simple two-step uh, process. On, uh, by using that, they can launch their uh, security token. And in a third process, uh, in a third step, they can uh, launch the STO using uh, the DAP. Seller is a layer 2 scaling project that is uh, building on existing blockchains, including Ethereum, that's why we're here. And uh, uh, what we specialize is uh, to accelerate not only just payment uh, using off-chain solutions, but also smart contracts. So we actually recently announced the uh, 
Uh, we just recently announced the testnet, and uh, we already launched our first application, which is a cool board game that you can do, uh, you can you can play with the, like people. Basically. Oh, so like every move is yeah uh, broadcast on um, blockchain. Uh, every move is not on blockchain. That's a key part, right? So if you if you broadcast every move on blockchain, this game will take like two days to finish. But this is actually in you know, off-chain skating. Uh, what we build is generalized state channel, and uh, therefore the smart contract is, is only executing between the involved party, which is you and me. And uh, therefore the game is, is tr extremely interactive, and uh, that's why you know we think this will actually bring mass adoption to blockchain. Right. So it's yeah. like it's much faster to adopt. Yeah. Okay, but why would I want to have uh, my my moves broadcast on blockchain? So right now I guess it's a demo. Uh, but why would I want like what what sort of projects would use this kind of high performance? Scaling solution. Yeah, there are a lot of projects that can use this. In fact, we re we recently released our SDK. Mm -hmm. uh, there are already exchanges uh, starting to use our off-chain scaling solutions to make uh, uh, non-costly exchanges. So basically, the exchange doesn't need to hold users' money, but still has the extremely efficient uh, uh, user experience, like the centralized exchange. Right. So it's right. like an order book matching and this process. And we also have uh, cool things like uh, a prediction market that you can build uh, in off-chain solutions. Right. As well. right. So like yeah. Augur. Yeah. But then, but then faster yes, yes yes in fact we can help auger scale Right, yeah. right, right, right. So right now, in terms of the developers, are there a lot of developers approaching you? What's what's kind of the whole atmosphere like over here? Yeah, so we recently also soft launched our C pilot program, which is our developer uh, outreaching program, and we have like hundreds of people already signed up, and we are all actively reaching out to them, and we'll release some tutorial about how to step by step build your uh, application or accelerate your existing application on Setter's platform. Before chatting to more people, let's buy some coffee with Ethereum. All right, so two two point eight USD sending fee. I'm gonna just be cheap. Can I be cheap and just send it with the lowest gas? That's okay. Yes. All right. We are based on zero information. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Don't fill my password. Don't fill my password. Uh, yeah, a lot of developers. This is like the best place for developers. I think talks are great. People are great. Everyone's building. Nice, nice. Okay, so in terms of building, what what projects are you interested in? Like, what what kind of like are there for certain things you guys want to learn or um, you want to look at in Ethereum? So we're definitely looking a lot into WebAssembly and uh, Web three Foundation, Parity, Leap P two P, a lot of the infrastructure and the standardization that's starting to emerge in this in the space, and we're using too. So we're trying to talk to these people, collaborate, and so forth. And this is this is a good place to do it. Okay, and we probably saw something about Ethereum 2.0 yesterday. Vitalik was dancing and singing a song about the struggles for Ethereum 2.0. What's your thoughts about Ethereum 2.0? Well, I wasn't at the talk yesterday, to be honest, okay. but I, I, do, I do know kind of like Ethereum 2.0 is proposing. I think it's great. I'm a big believer in that. I wish we could, uh, I wish Ethereum could find uh, maybe uh, some, some way to kind of break this down into like smaller steps so that mm -hmm. they can make progress faster. But at the same time, I think it's great. I think it's clear what needs to be done and needs to be solved to scale the system. And we're going there. And in terms of the Enigma project, what are you guys focusing on right now? Oh, so we're like heads down now. We release a testnet. We have actual projects like building, uh, privacy preserving, decentralized applications, which is what we want to enable, mm -hmm. uh, like secret voting, auctions, uh, machine learning over crypto data. And there are quite a few projects building on that. And we're working together with them. And that helps us improve our own platform uh, as we head out to the release in the next few months for mainnet. Right, so you have a mainnet release coming up. You're trying to work with people to test out how to do these secret contracts. Okay, so in terms of hard questions, are there any like kind of development pitfalls? Are there any things that you're trying to innovate and do better? You know, anything on terms of development front? I mean, all the time, look, we're, we're a very research driven, uh, um, uh, I guess, project, right? Like, we're doing a lot in the, in the, in MPC, secret multi-party computation, which is very tough cryptography. We are trying to make uh, SGX and trusted execution environments uh, more robust. Basically anything that goes to privacy preserving computation, which is a whole field in cryptography, we're trying to take from academia and bring it to the real world. And there's a lot of questions coming up. Awesome, awesome. So I hope that develops well and I'm really excited for your mainnet launch and we'll try to speak then.
Thank you. Good awesome. To see you. Good to see you again, Ty. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'm here with Nicola, the CTO of and found co-founder of Ledger. Co yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, how are you finding Ethereum DevCon so far? So it's very uh, lively, I would say. There are a lot of people wanting to build more solutions, even in a very bear market. So that's very pleasant to see. So, okay, I have a question about, so who, who decides what coins can be added on to Ledger? So we don't really decide. Now our politic is to wait for uh, external developers that will submit their applications. So it's open to basically everybody. As long as you can develop an application for it, uh, then usually the step is that we review the application. And when we are happy with it, so we just verify that the application is not doing anything nefarious. So we verify that the application is not stealing coin, basically. And after doing that, we can publish it on our app store. So now we've been talking about supply chain tax as well. So I was attending the Hackett conference and Peter Todd was there and he was quite concerned about possibilities of supply chain attack. People uh, intercepting ledgers before they're made. Is there anything that can be done to prevent this? How is that being solved? How is that being resolved? So today we are using a very simple, we are using very simple ways to offer the best protection in the market, in my opinion, uh, against supply chain attacks. So first we are using secure elements, so which are secure chips that you find in credit cards and passports, which have a very specific uh, property is that it can only be loaded with code that is signed by Ledger. And the chip is personalized for Ledger at factory, so which explains why we have long lead time some, sometimes and why people had to wait three months to get their Ledger last year, for example. And once the chip is in the factory, it can only be personalized by code which is signed by us. So at every stage of the personalization, every Ledger connects back to our server and is personalized by an HSM, so which is, an HSM is a hardware security module, so it's kind of a specific security unit running on a server that will establish a connection to the ledger device, send our code which is encrypted by us, so using multiple keys, and then verify then we will ask the device to generate a key pair, we will sign the public key, send back the public key signed by us, and so we complete an attestation process on the secure chip. So that's the first step of the attestation, and it's very efficient to protect against people that would change, that would try to provide a fake ledger because then it would fail the first to pass the first step of the but attestation. That's as long as the app that they install is legit. So maybe like what if what if like they don't install the legit ledger live app, you know, like um, is there a possibility that they can get a like a wrong link to your ledger website and then they install a wrong website to interact with the chip? So if you don't install Ledger Live today there is no application on your ledger after you pers after you personalize it. So the thing is you can't do anything with your ledger. So if you want to install an application on Ledger, you have at some point to connect to our server, which will do this test, which will reject you if you are not legitimate. Right. So another way, I mean, so that's just that's just a simple test. If you want to do a full test, you can open your Ledger today and verify that you have no extra chip, for example, on your PCB. So it shouldn't be necessary to do that for most people. But if you are extremely risk adverse, if you are extremely paranoid, I would say, but that's that's not. I mean, well, it's it's said as a state of mind. I mean, it's not said as something being bad. Or, or good, uh, you, we offer a way in our frequently asked questions to verify what kind of PCB you have in your device and to check it against the picture. So right, today, right, right. So if you're if you're anal, you can open it up, check check that it's the right exact same PCB, and then that's uh, that's why it's legit. Yeah. So that provides you some additional guarantee. So I consider that this is today kind of the best solution we can provide for the cost uh, for the invested cost because well we could add some extra stickers for example on top of the on top of the box. It doesn't really help because today reproducing a sticker costs about a few hundred euros. So I would say for a determined attacker, it's not really something that, that's going to help. So you've been working on Kanye for almost a year now since we last talked to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, how's it going? Yeah, it's busy. Uh, we are definitely trying to uh, focus on mainstream adoption, which is um, a lot of the user experience problems we're having at the moment. Mm -hmm. Trying to solve that to bring on board a whole bunch of new wave of new people who've never touched crypto before. Uh, so we're definitely trying to s come up with some cool, elegant solutions about onboarding people into crypto. Mm -hmm. But as you know, can work and can you know, the ecosystem is all about the gig economy and the, the new age of the freelancing that you don't need to pay Upwork or Uber or Airbnb 20% fees. You just pay directly the person you're engaging with your service. Here, I'm here, guys. I'm with Chi, the CEO of Quarkchain. So how do, you, how do you find the conference so far? You know, is this your first developer conference or was it like... Yeah, it's really good. I, I found a lot of interesting topic and also a lot of ongoing researches in the, in the conference. And um, I'm really happy to also know a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. And also, um, 
discuss with people of uh, new ideas. Any new ideas they can share with us, like anything that you want to, how to how to push us forward. Yeah, I think several ideas. For example, uh, Ethereum uh, like is developing new virtual machines based on the web assembly. Since we are also backward compatible Ethereum, so the web assembly like virtual machine is also very important to us. And also several improvement of existing virtual machines. I think that we can adopt them. And in addition, since we are a sharding project, mm -hmm. well, Ethereum also is doing the sharding in, in their rates. So I'm also learning what's the state of arms um, of sharding technology that is developed by Ethereum and how we can collaborate and uh, make also blockchain be benefit from uh, those innovations. That's interesting. So it's a very sharing world. So even if they have some breakthroughs or if you have some breakthroughs, you're willing to share with each other yeah. rather than to just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, so, so if that is the case, then if everyone's sharing, how do you become competitive in the space then? But yeah, I think um, so. Even a lot of things are sharing, but I feel um, the space is more and more open um, because people, everybody knows that there's a lot of issues in the blockchain, and uh, without collaborations with each other, it's very hard to just solve them by a single group. Um, so in this space, uh, we actually would like to also work with other projects. I should also met with us several other projects like Elon and also others that they are also come with us and discuss in their Australian solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is, uh, I think, very good familiar for the whole blockchain community. Okay. So Quarkchain, you're doing sharding, you're doing a high transaction throughput. So when do we feel like we can see something like that in action? When is like the layer one sharding solution, when is that going to come out for you guys? Oh, actually, um, we have launched our testnet mm -hmm. um, on July the 7th, mm -hmm. which we demonstrate that we are able to deliver more than 14,000 transactions per second at the moment. Um, right now, we are holding a TPS competition. Actually, it just concluded maybe several hours ago. Right. Um, so uh, we also have our encourage our community members to join and use our open source code to reproduce what we get. And so uh, we are very happy that we have got some number that is exceeding our expectations, get um, numbers that two times or maybe even more than us, uh, our like uh, best numbers that we launched on testnet um, three months ago. Um, so. Yeah, and also we encourage, um, we have additional competition bonus for the members uh, during our uh, travel in Europe that anybody who can challenge the uh, the first one will get uh -huh. another additional bounties uh, for the uh, TPS competition. Awesome, awesome. So I hope to keep in touch. And then you're, where are you based right now? Um, so, so currently uh, half of, of team members are based in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and half of the team members are based in uh, China. Nice. And also, we are also setting up our offices in uh, Korea. Mm -hmm. And also, we are planning to set an office in uh, Europe. So this is our first travel to Europe. But I think there's a lot of, I feel the atmosphere uh, is just as in in the European countries. So I think we would love to have more connections with local communities. I hope you guys enjoyed my coverage of Ethereum DevCon. For my next conference, I'm traveling all the way around the world to Asia, more precisely to Macau, the Las Vegas of Asia. There, I'll uncover what's really happening in the Chinese blockchain scene. Stay tuned, and I'll see you there.